Hello, today I'm gonna to talk about how to set up a grounding rod for your earthing grounding product, sheet, or mat. Now, first off, this is a DIY project because a lot of you have asked about how to set up a your own grounding rod and to avoid paying for a more expensive grounding rod that's available on earthing.com. And this is a disclaimer that this is at your own risk. So you set it up and this is going to be on you to make sure everything is working. And I am just providing this video for educational purposes. So ready, let's get started. So today I went to Home Depot and I picked up a few items. I uh, picked up a, a screwdriver that is a foot long and that cost about $12. I also picked up copper wire, solid 14 gauge copper wire, a spool of 100 feet. And that's quite spendy, it was $43. The wire was locked behind a cage door because people have been stealing copper. Copper is very expensive, but it's highly conductive. So I bought a spool and we don't need a 100 feet because you'll see that the bedroom window to the ground is roughly about 30 feet or so it's on the second floor and so but we buy 100 feet just in case and i can always make other things with it alternatively instead of the screwdriver you can use a metal barbecue skewer that's about a foot long and on amazon you can get them for about a dollar a piece but you have to buy a pack of 10 or a dozen or so. So it works out to be the same as the screwdriver. So you can either use a barbecue skewer that I said you can buy on Amazon and in a pack of 10 or 12. Alternatively, you can use a metal screwdriver. Now, one of the advantages about a screwdriver is actually when you drive this into the ground completely, there's a plastic top. So a lot of people have asked about lightning. Now keep in mind that lightning is always a risk. There's ground currents after lightning strikes the ground. Also, lightning, however, likes to strike things that are conductive and also higher or at the highest point. So the top of your house, top of trees tops are prime lightning rods. So if you bury this thing into the ground or even this into the ground where there's only a little nubbing showing, these two items it's very, very, very unlikely that lightning would strike. Now, don't take that as gospel because I don't want people to come back and say, well, Dr. Doan said I can use this thing and lightning does not hit it. I said very, very low risk and you should do it at your own risk. If you are concerned about lightning storms while you're using your grounding product or sheet or mat, then disconnect during those lightning storms. But also this plastic piece is not very conductive and so it's an insulator so it actually adds an additional layer so that lightning doesn't strike. But in the rare chance that lightning does strike near these grounding rods, there could be some ground currents that could travel up the lightning rod, up your cord, to your earthing cord, and to your earthing product. Now keep in mind that all earthing cords have a 100,000 ohm resistor. So a resistor prevents the flow or reduces the flow of current in that wire. And so at 100,000 ohms, the current flow from the lightning is going to be severely restricted. However, because lightning has such high current and high voltage, it may not stop everything. So there's a chance of arcing where the lightning can jump over the resistor. So still the resistor is a safety measure, but it's not a fail safe for all lightning strikes and electrical ground currents. So just keep that in mind. But I do recommend using the earthing cord with the 100,000 ohm resistor and not bypass it. As an additional safety measure, you could install an inline fuse and there's one available on this website here. This fuse, however, won't protect from direct lightning strikes. Mostly nothing can prevent a direct lightning strike from traveling up the cord. However, it could prevent a ground current that travels within the ground after a lightning strike happens in a nearby tree or nearby area close to the grounding rod. So this is something that you could look into if this is uh, something that, that is concerning to you. If you're concerned about lightning strikes, it's better to disconnect completely from the system during lightning storms. So this is the spool of 14 gauge solid copper wire that's 100 feet. And we're gonna use this to basically connect the grounding rod to 
the earthing sheet that I have upstairs. So it's important to have an ohm meter or a multimeter and I set it up so that it's on ohms and you'll see the letters O dot L. That means overload. That means the resistance between the red lead and the black lead is so high that is infinitely uh, resistant. There's, there's basically an open circuit. The reason why I brought the ohms meter out is because you want to make sure that the barbecue skewer or the screwdriver are adequately conductive to be grounding rods. I'm just going to use these alligator clips to help connect the voltmeter probes to the grounding rods. I've connected the barbecue skewer to the red and black probe at opposite ends of the skewer and you can see that it's less than two ohms. That's pretty good. So in reference, your skin has a conductance when it's moist, 1,000 ohms, and dry skin is 100,000 ohms. And then remember the earthing cord itself is 100,000 ohms. So really anything less than a few hundred ohms is going to be conductive. But for your grounding rod that you're gonna use, you want it to be very conductive. So less than five ohms would be ideal. So now I've connected the screwdriver to the black and red leads at opposite ends of the screwdriver to the meter, and it's now 0.3 ohms in this screwdriver. So this is one is very conductive. I'm gonna use this as my grounding rod. The bedroom is on the second floor of this home, and we're gonna put a grounding rod below the window. Where I'd like to place the grounding rod is near plants and also near sprinkler system, so I know the ground will be moist and will be good for conductivity. I am on the second floor of my home and I am about 16 feet up and I'll need about 20 feet of the copper wire in order to complete this project. I bought a spool of about 100 for about $42, $43. So therefore, the total cost of copper wire is under $10. So with 14 gauge wire, you can see I can actually close the window and actually close the screen on the wire. So it provides good insulation. Okay, I'm just outside. Okay, it's connected to the uh, screwdriver here and I'm just gonna stick into the ground. I live in Florida, so the ground is never frozen here. But if you live in a part of the country or the world, that has a lot of snow, freezing temperatures, you have to check how far the ground freezes. I'll post right here the freezing depths of soil in various parts of the world. So frozen soil is not conductive. So ice, for example, is not very conductive. So here you can see me measuring the ohms resistance in a ice cube and it's extremely high in the millions. And so you have to drive the grounding rod to below the freeze line of your soil. So that means in certain regions, if you go eight feet down, like in Alaska or Northern Canada, that should be adequate. If your grounding rod is in a area where the soil is completely frozen, you are not going to get very good grounding. So what I have here is an earthing cable, okay? So within the earthing cable, there's going to be a 100,000 ohm resistor. So I recommend using an earthing cable with your grounding rod. Your grounding rod has no resistor. So I showed you how to measure resistances at the beginning of this video with a multimeter on the ohm setting. So do the same thing. So instead of measuring the screwdriver or the barbecue skewer resistance, measure the resistance in this cable from this attachment point to basically this prong. You should see 100,000 ohms. If you see that, then that's good. Anything higher than 100,000 ohms is no good. There are companies that are selling cables because they want to filter out dirty electricity. And I'll show that in a different video that basically adding resistors can actually remove that dirty electricity, but you're basically blocking it. So as you add resistors, you eventually get it a open circuit. So there's no connection to the outlet ground whatsoever. So beware, those anti 
static straps as well are there to discharge static electricity, but they're not made to receive the grounding from the earth. So therefore, they have a one mega ohm, one million ohm resistor, and those are no good. And you typically see them as those blue straps that you see on Amazon. Again, let me remind you, this is just for educational purposes, and therefore, um, I'm not telling you what to do. Do it at your own risk. So this is my wire from the outside. This is the prong that you normally would stick into the ground outlet, but instead, we're just gonna wrap this wire. Okay, so we wrap that wire around like that. We get a pair of pliers, basically squeeze down the end a little bit so there's not a sharp, sticky if you want you can take some electrical tape and then wrap that around so that way uh, you don't accidentally cut yourself on that sharp end but this is pretty blunt and that looks pretty good i have an old earthing grounding sheet and this is from earthing they don't make these sheets anymore because the silver tends to corrode and become non-conductive after several washes and actually some people have reported that after one wash it's no longer working however mine continue to we basically wash with a gentle detergent, no softeners. We don't dry it in the dryer and we line dry it. And also we place it underneath a 100% cotton sheet. So that makes it last longer. We don't have to wash it as often. I've had this sheet here more than five years, but it has lost some of its conductivity. And remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you how to use your multimeter to check the resistances. So check the ohms from one part of the sheet to the other part of the sheet and see how much conductance is left in the sheet. And so you can also attach here at this metal nipple with one probe of your multimeter and then check various parts of the sheet and see how conductive it is. Ideally, you want the ohms to be less than 10 ohms, kind of like what you saw with the metal barbecue skewer and also with the screwdriver. This cord is connected to the grounding rod, which is essentially a foot long screwdriver that I place near a plant. I'm connected to the earthing sheet and let's see if it drops my body voltage. To measure my body voltage, the multimeter is set on alternating current voltage and the meter is grounded to the grounding port of the outlet. When I pinch the red probe of the multimeter, you can see that I am generating in my body 60 Hertz electrical currents that's measuring 4.4 volts AC. Remember, I'm also on the second floor of the house and the higher you go, the higher your body voltage. Okay, so now when I touch this grounding sheet, it should go down. And indeed, it goes down. It goes down to about 110 millivolts AC. That is a good drop. You want a approximately 90% to 95% drop in body voltage. And I'll put the equation up on the screen so that you can actually use that equation if you're math challenge and, I, and i'm not saying you are but i'm just saying just in case i'll put that up there for you and so off the grounding sheet with the grounding sheet this is a true body voltage drop so i know that my outlets are grounded properly i've tested them in a previous video and so my outlets are at the earth's potential the meter is grounded to the outlet so therefore whatever i touch this red probe to that's in relative to the earth's potential the grounding sheet itself is connected outside. So the circuit is the screwdriver, copper wire to the grounding sheet, to my hand, drops my body voltage. And when I measure my body voltage in respect to the earth's potential with the grounding outlet, it is now dropped to 112 millivolts AC. So that is a true body voltage drop. So the other question people ask is, can I use pajamas or can I sleep with pajamas and can I put a 100% cotton sheet on top of this grounding product? The answer is absolutely yes and let me show you. Okay so ungrounded my body is 5 volts AC and that's because I'm close to this layer. I get on the bed and I have jeans on, I have a cotton sheet and most people just kind of like put their hand on the sheet and that's not going to be good enough to basically get the body heat the pressure the moisture so even laying on the sheet even though i have cotton jeans a cotton t-shirt my body voltage dropped from above 5 volts ac to now 428 millivolts ac 
So as I lay here, you can see it's dropping gradually to about 306 millivolts AC. So the take home message is that as you lay here, your body heat and also your body moisture basically makes the cotton between you and the conductive grounding mat or sheet more conductive. That's what helps you to basically get conductance even with a 100% cotton sheet above it. So now I'm below 300 millivolts and it keeps continuing to drop. So basically wearing thin cotton pajamas, maybe just wearing shorts to bed, uh, just having your bare legs touch uh, will be just fine. And because I have both arms now on the bed instead of one holding the phone, my body voltage is down to 251 millivolts AC. So that's pretty equivalent to basically having a sheet alone. But now I have several layers of cotton and I'm still getting pretty decent conductance. I was above five volts AC and now I'm down to 250 millivolts. And that's a very good drop in body voltage. So let's break down the cost. So the earthing grounding rod is about $29. And that is basically a plug and play solution. You stick the rod into the ground, basically run into your house. The cord itself is made out of steel, it's not copper. So I upgraded the wire in my DIY setup to copper wire. And so I needed about roughly 20 feet of wire that costs roughly about $8.50 for that 20 foot segment of copper wire. I also opted to get the screwdriver because of the insulating plastic cap for those who are worried about the possible lightning strike. So uh, I got the one foot long screwdriver and that cost $12. So the total cost for the DIY grounding rod setup is roughly a little bit over $20. So you save a little bit of money, but you can go cheaper wire or if you have wire sitting around the house, or if you wanna go with a smaller gauge wire and save some money, that's a possibility. Or you can use a barbecue skewer. You can buy a pack of 10 or 12 for about 10 bucks. So that's about a buck per skewer. Or if you have metal skewers around the house that are about a foot long, you can use that as well and just wrap the copper wire around the barbecue skewer instead of the screwdriver. If you do that, then that will only cost you under $10. So basically, earthing rod from the company is about $29. Do it yourself. You can go anywhere from just under $10 to about $20, depending on how fancy of a setup you want. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please place them in the comments below. Also, remember to subscribe so that you get all my videos in the future. So until next time, happy grounding and stay healthy.